Hey guys, I'm Sal. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're going to be finishing up the hatchback series where I'm trying to bring this hatchback to life. Um, it's my 1992 Nissan 240SX and um, there were a bunch of holes drilled in this deck lid for a bunch of previous spoilers that have been mounted. And uh, we left off in the last video with me filling those holes with solder and then just left it with the bare metal. So in this video, uh, I went through and filled all that with Bondo, sanded it smooth, and then painted it with some OEM Nissan white. I just got rattle cans, um, but it came out pretty good. So let me show you how I did it. Okay, so like I said, we're picking up where we left off in the last video with the exposed solder and deep holes to fill. First thing I wanted to do was knock down the surrounding paint and scuff it up with some 80 grit sandpaper before applying the Bondo. Just trying to make sure that the Bondo has a good surface to bond to. I think this would be a good time to mention that I am not an expert at this, nor have I even really done it before, so take my advice and methods with a grain of salt. With that said, if you have any advice on how I could have done it better, please leave it in the comments below. It could also help someone else out um, watching the video. I did achieve some pretty good results though, and I really found that the only way to get to where I was satisfied was just putting in the hours. Um, I have the luxury of this being my second car, so I was really in no rush to get it painted and installed, but I did spend almost two weeks of going out and sanding a little bit smoother each day. Anyways, this is what we were looking at after the first night of sanding. I really thought this method of shining the flashlight at a low angle worked really well at showing the high and low spots easily, and I used this method over and over again throughout the whole process. The raised hole in the back there ended up causing some frustration later in the process because it's such a high spot, but we got it figured out. In the next row here, you can see the indentations from a rear wing that was mounted at some point. These were also deceptively hard to make look good, especially the one up by the glass. The panel kind of curves up to the weather strip and it just wasn't as simple as the lower one, which was in a fairly flat location. Similar story here on the third set of holes. You can clearly see the indentations and what needs to be filled. The last set looks rough, but honestly it was the easiest to fill by far. There were no weird high spots and the surrounding area was very flat, so it just went really smoothly. Doing so much sanding, it was <laughs> hard to keep the dust down and I ended up making a huge mess in the bed of my truck, which if you follow my channel at all, you'll know that I like to keep the truck looking good, so that was a little painful. But anyways, once I felt confident that the surrounding paint was scuffed up enough, uh, I applied the Bondo. I didn't record it, I really wish I had set it up on a time lapse or something, but I'd never used it before and I just wanted to give my undivided attention to doing it properly. Definitely something I need to work on for these videos though, is just, just record everything. <laughs> okay, I just laid the Bondo down. Don't know if I did it right. <laughs> um, I made sure to scuff up everything one last time with this green scotch right bright pad. I feel like it's scuffs it enough, I don't know. Um, then I went over it with lacquer thinner a couple times, making sure uh, you know nothing came off on the towels when I was doing the last coat. And then I mixed up the Bondo. It definitely hardens quickly. Once you apply the hardener, it's, it's going. <laughs> so I think I stretched it a little bit doing all this, um, but I think I planned out enough to cover all the areas I wanted to. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to do another layer, of course, but yeah, this is uh, quite the experience. <laughs> a little stressful, but it's, uh, it's kind of fun. Hopefully it comes out good. Let's see. Waiting for the Bondo to cure, I decided to take off this Nissan emblem. The factory hatch has a little Nissan sticker there, but the car came like this when I bought it. And I think it looks a little bit better. It was kind of nice to not worry about leaving behind a perfect finish, like if you were debadging a new car with perfect paint. Um, I knew I was gonna sand whatever was left behind, so this just went quickly and smoothly. After the Bondo was good to go, I started on the sanding spree. <laughs> I used 80 grit to knock down the Bondo quickly, and then I switched to 120 once I felt like we were getting a little more close to smooth. You can see the crosshatch pattern that I'm using, alternating the direction I'm pushing every once in a while. I probably should have been covering bigger areas, but in my mind, these were such concentrated high spots that it kind of made sense to focus most of my time there, and then worry about any waviness um, once they were a little closer to the original paint. Again, I'm not a pro, so this is probably not the best method, but um, I'm also probably not using the best tool. Uh, I just picked up this rubber sanding block from Harbor Freight, and I mean, it was working well for me to keep consistent pressure across a bigger area, but I think if I was doing a more curvy panel, like a fender or quarter panel, um, I definitely would have invested in a longer sanding block 
to try and get more fluid results. Um, but I really think this small rubber sanding block worked fine for my situation. Something I found while I was sanding though was that I was pushing way too much pressure on the sanding block. I was having a ton of buildup in the sandpaper and uh, it just wasn't sanding efficiently. Um, about halfway through, I realized that <laughs> if I put less pressure and let the sandpaper do the work, um, the process went much smoother. So I'm a little embarrassed it took me so long to figure it out, but I'm glad I did at some point. <laughs> um, I won't show all the sanding I did because like I said, I did spend almost two weeks on this, but trust me when I say that it was feeling good and ready for primer. I finished with some 320 grit and then taped off the glass and the third brake light and got ready to prime the next day. So I'm not exactly proud of this priming job. Um, it went down fine in most spots, but there were two main areas where the paint really wasn't going down great. So I just, <laughs> just kept hitting it over and over again, hoping the primer could fill in the holes, but it didn't really work. Once it was dry after a couple hours, I started with the sanding again. I was anxious to see how my pre-primer sanding job was, and I really think it was pretty good. The primer showed a few areas that needed to be touched up, but overall we were uh, definitely headed in the right direction. Okay, so I just spent some time off camera sanding this down a little bit more. Uh, I did 220 to knock it down pretty quickly. Then I went up to 320 um, and that smoothed it out a lot. And then I just hit it with some 800 and now it's feeling super smooth. I think it's just about ready for paint. Um, I'm really happy with where it's at, with where it's at right now. Um, I think the primer had a little bit of trouble bonding to the Bondo. Um, I don't know if I should have prepped it a little bit better or what the deal is, but um, you can kind of see some, like, I don't know, really know how to describe it, pitting probably, um, right where I had the Bondo down. So only in a couple spots, it's kind of weird. I probably should have prepped the surface better for the primer. In my mind, for whatever reason, I was like, oh, it's only the primer. I don't have to go crazy prepping the surface obviously not true um, so I wish I had spent an extra you know five minutes prepping the surface doing a couple coats of um, lacquer thinner on top trying to make sure it's perfectly clean because I only did kind of one one swipe of it and then started painting so um, you know hindsight's 2020 20, whatever but I do think I'm probably going to call it here for the primer and sanding I think I'm going to get ready to paint I might do it tomorrow or the next day. I gotta look at the weather, see um, how it's looking. But yeah, start laying down some white. I'm excited to see how this thing comes out. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's hot out here. I'm dying. I'll uh, I'll see you tomorrow, the next day probably when I'm actually painting this thing. Okay, it's game time. Um, I'm gonna paint the hatch tonight. I think it's as prepped as I can make it. Um, I finished up with some 800 grit sandpaper on top of the primer, um, and it's it's really smooth. I'm, I'm happy with it. I think it's gonna look really good. Uh, for now, I just retaped all this, make sure everything was masked off well. I'm gonna go over it with some lacquer thinner, make sure everything is off of it. And then, um, yeah, I'll roll right into laying down some universal white. I wasn't sure what color white to get. There's a couple different options. Um, I don't know if what's on the car is OEM Nissan or what the deal is. If for whatever reason it looks awful and doesn't match at all, I can always go buy the correct paint and just lay a few layers on top. Um, it should lay well onto the universal white. So yeah, fingers crossed everything works out. Let's do it. I was much more diligent about prepping the surface this time around and uh, I did a very thorough cleaning with lacquer thinner before laying down the first couple coats of white. The paint went down nicely enough but it's so hard to get consistent overlapping strokes with a rattle can like this. Also these cans from AutoZone are tiny <laughs> and uh, I quickly ran out of the universal white so I decided to just pick up OEM Nissan Super White code 326 and uh, I'm really glad I did. The store only had one left and, uh, and I snagged it.
Okay, cool. So, uh, all done painting this thing. I think it came out good. Not great, good, um, but I'm really happy with it. Um, you can tell it's spray painted. It's not great. I don't have a clear coat on it, so it's not like super consistent all the way across. So that's not great either, but there's no holes. It, it's like a, a three footer, five footer, something like that, you know? From a distance, it looks great. So that's all that matters to me. I'm gonna get it thrown back on the car. We'll see how good the paint matches. And uh, I'm just excited to drive it. I haven't driven it in like a month. So let's do this. Okay, first time opening it up with the new hinge. Let's see how it works. Looks like it's holding. Everything lines up. Woo! Okay, so this is the uh, the trunk installed. I think the color match is pretty good. Obviously, it's a little different. This side's more obvious. Um, but I really think it's the same color paint. It's just this paint is really dirty and oily and whatever else. But, man, it looks so good. I'm so happy with this. Look at that. A trunk with no holes. So happy. I'm just I'm just excited to drive this thing again. Um, it's been a long time coming. So I'm going to get the uh, interior all cleaned up, get all this crap out of here, and then, uh, yeah, we'll take it for a drive. Okay, what a roller coaster of emotions. So, <laughs> um, you saw yesterday, I went to start it after reinstalling the hatch and nothing. It just clicked and then no power at all to the car. Dome light wasn't coming on. I couldn't get into accessory mode. Like, like nothing was coming on. So I was like, oh crap, I guess I wasn't trickle charging it correctly. I just must have a dead battery. So I went ahead and hooked up my battery charger tested the voltage on the battery it was like over 13 volts I was like okay we're heading in the right direction um, and then this still had no power to the car and I was like what the heck is going on so I started well maybe I blew a fuse so I'm looking at all the fuses and then all of a sudden the power comes back the seatbelt whirrs are doing their thing and uh, I'm like okay I guess we'll give it another shot so put the key in all the accessories come on, you know, looks good. Go to start it and same thing. Click and then nothing. That's when I got really confused because nothing was coming back after that and I didn't know where to start. <laughs> so like I said, I started with the fuse box down in the driver's side footwell. Uh, I didn't see any blown fuses. I pulled every single fuse. Then I came up here, checked this fuse box, no blown fuses, no nothing up here. Um, there's a, I guess like a relay box down there. Nothing looking wrong in there. Super confused. Then I figured, well, I was just doing a bunch of work in this area, fixing the fuel pump. So maybe something is grounded out wrong. Um, something maybe tore, I don't know. I, I was looking through there, everything looked good. Looking at the starter, I'm like, man, I don't know what the heck's going on. I was like, did I fry my ECU? Pulled the ECU out, disconnected it let it do its thing for a few minutes, plugged it back in, still nothing. Um, I like ripped up the carpet to trace this wire, make sure the power line wasn't doing anything wrong. And uh, yeah, just completely dumbfounded. <laughs> and then I said, after, it was literally eight o'clock at night, it was noon when I tried to start the car. I said, you know what, let's just start at the, the very back and start working our way forward. And uh, so I said, we'll start right here with the ground, the battery ground. And I took it up, sanded it down a little bit because it looked like it didn't have a great connection. And as I was bolting it back down, I saw sparks flying and I was like, no way was this the thing. <laughs> no way. And uh, sure enough, connected the battery back up and the whole car worked. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? Just this ground right here was the whole problem. And the cherry on top is now when I, the car is idling, the speedometer reads zero miles an hour and my AEM gauge that used to turn off the car when it was plugged in uh, works now. So 
I don't know how I missed that earlier, but yeah, it was just a bad ground this whole time. So I got that fixed up, but I tore the whole car apart trying to figure out what the heck was going on. So I got to get all this back together and I can finally take it for a drive. So let's do that. Okay, cool. So that's going to be it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm super happy with how the hatchback came out. Um, I couldn't have asked for better results. So thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.